Kairunga in a kupu tutahi he kupu he fakatufiri tia te huarahi mo tatane ya kolo iti nei wa te wa te ta ta to huiato no mai haere mai. These first few words um, of welcome uh, to open the uh, the pathway for our conversation of the day today. Thank you all for being with us. Uh, welcome. Uh, he fakaro he mihi uh, tino mihi ki uh, te tangata whenua o inei rohi a tāhua, nai tau whānui, mai te, te rangi ki te tonga, nai tu ahiriri hoki, uh, tēnā koutou, uh, mihi mai karanga, mai karaka mai. Uh, we acknowledge um, uh, the nai tau people, the, the, uh, those with traditional authority over these uh, beautiful lands and the lands in which uh, um, many of our important assets uh, are located, down in Manapouri and, uh, and Waitaki in particular. And um, we are very appreciative of the relationships we have with the Naito communities in those areas as well. Thinking of Naito, we're very conscious that the tribe's lost two of its uh, prominent leaders this year. Tahu Portiki, a former chief executive of Te Runanga or Naitahu from Dunedin, passed away recently. Uh, and uh, Jane Davis, a, um, a tribal leader and a community leader for many, many years, uh, passed away this year as well. We've had the privilege uh, as a company of working with Jane and her community over many years, and particularly with the uh, Kākāpō Recovery Project in recent times. So we just acknowledge the work that uh, those people in those communities uh, have done and do do, and our um, connection uh, with them as we travel together. It's, um, of course, as we stand and we think of those who have passed, this is Christchurch, and we have to think of the uh, tragic events of March the 15th, and um, uh, the heavy heaviness of that certainly sits uh, with us all, and the, uh, the trauma and the violence visited upon the Muslim community in particular, but of course the, the whole uh, community and across the whole country really. So at this time it's uh, appropriate just to, uh, to sit with those thoughts, and um, it's very tempting in my case at least to turn away from all of that, but uh, um, just uh, sit with it and appreciate uh, and think of uh, those people and those circumstances and the work uh, that we need uh, to do. And with that, um, gently and with respect, we allow the dead uh, uh, to go. Hare atu, hare te hunga mate kia rātou, te hunga ora kia tātou, tēnā no koutou katoa. So at that point we can come back uh, into the world of light and uh, acknowledge the reason we've come together, uh, this opportunity to be together, to discuss, um, discuss our company, this uh, great ocean uh, going catamaran that is Meridian Energy, uh, one whole built on uh, very solid uh, business performance and assets and skills, and the other important matching whole being our deep values, our commitment to all of our uh, stakeholders and our commitment to make genuine contribution to the well-being of the communities in which we operate. It's also a chance to look backwards, perhaps not just one year, but maybe ten, and look at the remarkable uh, progress that this uh, um, uh, company has made, the distance that we've travelled, um, under the uh, very clear guidance of uh, our captain at this time, and the, and the clear leadership uh, of our departing captain, in fact, Tenakwe uh, Chris, um, uh, me to you. And it's a chance to look forward. And so at this time, we're also welcoming new crew members aboard the boat as we pr prepare to uh, push off in the next leg of the journey. Uh, Kati, uh, um, again, welcome to you all. Thank you for being with us and thank you for being an integral part of the company. Akuiti, Akurahi, Hurino Te Whare, Tenra no Tato. Thank you, Anaki. <coughs> Tēnā kūtū katoa. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, on this wonderful Christchurch day. I am Chris Mola, Chairman of Meridian. On behalf of the Board and Management, I welcome everyone to the meeting, in particular, Justin Anderson and Mark Regan from the New Zealand Treasury, representing the Crown, and Trevor Deed, uh, the company's lead audit partner from Deloitte, who's in the front row here. Meridian is a health and safety conscious company. In the unlikely event of an emergency, you are requested to adhere to the following procedures. 
If there is an earthquake, please remain seated and protect your head and neck. When the tremor stops, please stand by and listen for and follow the instructions that are given. Do not move until directed to do so by venue staff and fire wardens who will be wearing coloured armbands. In the event of an, any other emergency, including a fire, an alarm will sound. Please follow the racecourse staff who will direct you to the closest exit, which are clearly marked behind me to the right and to the left of the stage. Please leave immediately and assemble at the parade ring lawn in front of the grandstand. Everyone is asked to remain at the assembly point until the all clear is given by the racecourse wardens to either re-enter the venue or leave the property. In terms of bathrooms, these are located in the foyer through which you entered this room and are clearly signposted on both the right and left side of the entrance. Moving to the order of business today, I declare the 2019 annual shareholder meeting open. The meeting has been duly convened and a quorum is present. The minutes of last year's meeting have been posted on Meridian's website and are held by the company secretary. I will now introduce the Meridian board and management sitting on the stage beside me. On my immediate left is Deputy Chairman Peter Wilson. Next to Peter are directors Mark Cairns and Mark Verbeest. On the left of Mark Verbeest is Chief Executive Neil Barclay and Company Secretary Jason Steen. Next to Jason are Directors Michelle Henderson, Julia Hoare, Jan Dawson and Arniki Goodhall. I would also like to introduce Nagaja Sanakuma. Nagaja, please stand up. Thank you. Nagaja is not sitting on the stage as she is not yet a director of the company. However, she is standing for election today and subject to receiving more than 50% of the votes cast, will join the board with effect from the 1st of January 2020. Neil Barclay will introduce his management team to you at the commencement of his chief executive's address. The business of the meeting is set out in the notice of meeting and will commence with my chairman's address. Neil will then review the group's performance and share some of his insights as chief executive of the company. This will be followed by a general question and answer session on matters relating to the management and operations of the Meridian Group. We will then move to consider the five resolutions set out in the notice of meeting. At the close of the meeting, you are invited to join Meridian's board and management for refreshments, which will be served at the rear of this room. Finally, Meridian's integrated report is available on our website, and we encourage you to read it. There are hard copies available here today, should you want one. However, they are limited in number because Meridian chooses to minimise the print run in consideration of the environment. I will now move to my Chairman's address. Today we are gathered in the Balmerino Room at Rickerton Racecourse in Christchurch. Balmerino was a national champion racehorse with many international successes. He started 46 times, won 22 races, and was placed a further 13 times. He raced in New Zealand, Australia, the United States, England, Italy and France, including being runner-up in the 1997 Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe in Paris, the richest horse race in the world at that time. Meridian also strives to be a national champion. 
We pioneered and led renewable generation in this country, years before the current Prime Minister declared, quote, climate change is my generation's nuclear-free moment, unquote. As a company, our stated purpose is to strive for clean energy for a fairer and healthier world in ways that align with our social commitments, the needs of our customers, and the expectations of our shareholders. This is why Meridian is a strong supporter of the Climate Change Response Zero Carbon Amendment Bill introduced by the Government in May 2019. Once passed, the Bill will provide for a series of emissions budgets to act as stepping stones towards New Zealand's 2050 targets of net zero greenhouse gas emissions and a reduction in methane emissions of being between 24 and 47 per cent. The bill also establishes a new independent climate change commission to provide expert advice and monitoring to help keep successive governments on track. Given Meridian's 100 per cent renewable generation legacy in New Zealand, we continue to lead environmental change. Meridian is now net zero carbon across our operations, and we have committed to halve our gross emissions by 2030. We have made real progress in Australia, growing renewable generation and customers, including offering a carbon neutral alternative in a country that is dominated by fossil fuel energy. Similarly, in New Zealand, Meridian has launched a renewable energy certification that provides business customers with an insurance the company has generated enough renewable energy to cover their electricity usage. The first customer was the Garage Project, a craft beer company that is passionate about making its business as sustainable as it can with Meridian's help. Renewable energy is the solution to many of New Zealand's carbon challenges. Providing clean energy that will be transformative for many industries, particularly transport, means that it is an exciting time for our sector and the Meridian Board and Management believe this will be positive for both our customers and our shareholders. Through the release of our integrated annual report in August, we became the first New Zealand company to publicly disclose the risks climate change poses to our business. We believe that this type of reporting to shareholders is equally, if not more important, than historical financial results, which rest assured I will cover before concluding my address. Two weeks ago, the Minister of Energy and Resources released the government's response to the recommendations of the Electricity Price Review, or the EPR, as I will refer to it in the balance of my speech. We have always said that Meridian is broadly supportive of the suite of initiatives put forward by the EPR, and nothing has materially changed since the government's announcement on the 3rd of October. The Minister's press release says, quote, the EPR found that while overall the market is working well, it is not delivering for everyone. Too many people are paying higher bills than they need to, and many people struggle with the cost of power, unquote. This statement resonates with our view that the New Zealand market is delivering reliable, affordable, and largely renewable electricity, consistent with our purpose that we strive for clean energy for a fairer and healthier world. Evidence of this are the numerous climate change initiatives I have referred to early in my address, and our decision to remove prompt payment discounts and replace them with simpler tariffs in advance of any public recommendations on the subject being made to the Minister 
by the EPR. Indeed, it is very pleasing to note that in her press release of 3rd of October, the Minister said, quote, we will also be requiring retailers to follow Meridian's lead and change pricing structures to pass discount rates to all customers instead of relying on hidden late payment penalties. When Meridian did this, it put $5 million back into the pockets of customers and the EPR estimates that $45 million would be saved when other companies follow suit." Unquote. In removing the prompt payment discount, the board was fully cognizant of the potential cost to shareholders of $5 million. However, in the grander scheme of things, it was obvious that the prompt payment discount was patently unfair to those facing hardship because they were the very people who were less able to pay their bills by the due date, and the discount they forfeited bore no relation to the cost of collecting overdue debts. Meridian has a number of other ways of helping low-income households, including tailored payment plans and a level, play, level pay product that keeps bills the same throughout the year with options to pay for power weekly, fortnightly and monthly. In addition, we employ a hardship consultant to help customers in difficulty, and we also support a pro pilot program called Energy Mate. This free in-home coaching service is run by the Electricity Retailers Association of New Zealand, ERANS, and brings together electricity retailers like us, lines companies, community organisations and the government. The coaches support families at highest risk of energy hardship by helping them talk to their retailers about payment plans, doing high level assessments of how warm and healthy their homes are and working with them to access services like curtain banks, or talk to their landlords about insulation. While I'm on the subject of unfairness, the Electricity Authority has concluded that the transmission pricing charging regime is unfair to South Island generators and results in inefficient outcomes as it imposes a tax on further investment in South Island generation. This is because an element of the current transmission pricing methodology, or TPM as it is commonly referred, is that the costs of the HVDC link across Cook Strait are levied in totality on the South Island generators, even though electricity flows through the cable in both directions. That is from the North Island to the South Island as well as from the South Island to the North Island. As a company, we are highly frustrated by the interdecadal delay in resolving this lack of fairness and economic inefficiency the current re regime creates. Accordingly, we support the Electricity's Authority plan to deliver the reform package that they have proposed and to do so as quickly as possible. Turning now to the, role, the year in review. The board and executive are proud of the record result achieved this year. Group EBITDAF increased by 26% to 838 million dollars, which resulted in a net profit after tax of 339 million dollars, an increase of 69% on the previous year. Contemporaneously, our share price increased by 52%, which culminated in Meridian becoming New Zealand's largest company on the stock exchange as measured by value, or commonly referred to as the company's market capitalisation. 
At the risk of being accused of profiteering, I think this is an absolutely stunning result. Wholesale market prices significantly exceeded the prior year as a result of unplanned outages at the Pohukura gas field, while smart and prudent use of our hydro storage allowed us to generate and sell record hydro volumes at those very high prices. The share price was also underpinned by declining interest rates in New Zealand and around the world. Looking to the future, the composition of your board is changing in the most significant manner since the company was listed in October 2013. Later in the meeting today, you will be asked to re-elect Jan Dawson to the board and elect three other women, Julia Hoare, Michelle Henderson and Nagajar Sanat Kumar as directors of the company for the first time. The biographies of each of the four candidates are set out in the notice of meeting and they will all address you at the time the appropriate resolution is considered by the meeting. The three new directors standing for election were selected following a comprehensive external independent search based solely on merit and if elected today together with Jan Dawson will result in the board having a 50-50 gender mix. I stand to be corrected, but I am not aware of any other significant listed company in New Zealand that can lay claim to an equal board composition of ma females and males. The three new directors replaced Steve Reindler, Mary Devine and myself. Steve stepped down to last at last year's annual meeting due to a con or before last year's annual meeting due to a conflict of interest that arose when Z Energy, of which he was also a director, purchased a controlling interest in energy retailer and competitor Flick. Accordingly, I thank Steve for his service to the company in Auckland last year. However, I see that Steve has made the journey to be here with us today, which typifies his support of and loyalty to the company. I know he loves Meridian because of its iconic assets, engineering excellence and renewables credentials. So please join me in a round of applause for Steve. I think you've got to stand up, Steve. The second person who's standing down is Mary Devine, who resides in Christchurch, so I'm sure some of you will no doubt know her. And she retires at the conclusion of today's meeting, having served as a director since 2010. Unfortunately, Mary is an apology for today, but she did attend yesterday's board meeting and we were able to pay tribute to her last night. In March this year, Mary was appointed Managing Director of Hallenstein Glassons and advised the company of her intention to stand down from her governance positions. Mary made a significant contribution to Meridian as Chair of the Remuneration and People Committee and as the Board's retail expert, having formerly served as Managing Director of renowned Christchurch institution, Ballantines, Chief Executive of Easy Buy and as a Director of Briscoe's Group, Foodstuffs South Island and Insurer IAG. Accordingly, I would ask that the company formally records its thanks to Mary, again accompanied by a round of acclamation. <laughs> the other person who will retire at the close of this meeting is myself. Consequently, Mark the Beast will assume the role of chairman later this morning. He is a highly experienced chairman, being the current chair of the very successful Freightways and the former chair of both Transpower, which manages New Zealand's electricity 
transmission <laughs> network and spark that I have hastily said or going to say, and he has no involvement in Rugby World Cup rights. <laughs> Which are dear to my heart, of course. As I reflect on my time as a director and chair of Meridian, one very special thing stands out. The initial public offering on the 29th of October 2013, which is the biggest IPO in New Zealand's history. But it wasn't the IPO itself that met its attention, because it was a hard slog, 24 months in the gestation, complex because of the instalment receipts, and not without controversy. Thankfully, the board at the time took the decision not to push to be first to market, so that we had time to recruit a top-class chief executive, clean up a somewhat untidy balance sheet, and learn from the listing experience of Mighty River Power, now Mercury, which the government decided to select to be the first cab off the rank. Instead, the special thing that stands out for me is the massive transformation and legacy that the IPO brought about by revolutionising the culture of the company and its performance. The mixed ownership model was politically unpopular at the time of its inception, but it is delivered in spades for Meridian, just like it has for Air New Zealand and Port of Tauranga, both represented by directors on our board, and without the naysayers' predicted loss of New Zealand control and significant retail price increases. We secured the services of Mark Bins from Fletcher's, who simply would not have joined the company had we remained as a state-owned enterprise. Given investment market scrutiny, the board also knew it had to put in place a capital management programme initially for five and subsequently seven year, extended to seven years to address the company's rather lazy balance sheet with the result that whilst all shareholders have benefited, the Crown has received more dividends each year for its 51% shareholding in Meridian, the listed company, than it did for its previous 100% shareholding in Meridian, the state-owned enterprise. Overall, since listing, the shareholder return is 348%. This means that if you subscribe for the minimum shareholding of $1,000 at the time of listing in 2013, and paid the required further $500 in May 2015 for the instalment receipts, your investment as at last Friday was worth $5,310, giving an unrealised profit of $3,810, or two and a half times your original investment. And on top of that, since the listing, you will have received $1,370 in gross dividends. And I think you got a check in the mail yesterday. Finally, as I depart, I would like to acknowledge a number of people from a personal perspective. First, firstly, the Honourable Simon Power, who was Minister of State-Owned Enterprises, appointed me as the Chair of Meridian prior to the company being listed. Secondly, to the Treasury staff that were involved during the IPO and subsequently, in particular, Chris White and Justin Anderson. Thirdly, Peter Wilson, our Deputy Chairman, who has been on most of the journey with me. Peter, thank you for your sage advice and wise counsel at all times. Fourthly, the directors, especially those who joined the board before the IPO, Jan Dawson, Anaki Gudo and Mark Kenz, who are still here today, and former directors, John Bongard, Steve Reindler, Sally Farrier and Mary Devine. Fifthly, the two chief executives who have led Meridian as a listed company, Mark Bins and Neil Barclay. Neil, you had a hard act to follow but you've done a superb job, as the year's result proves. 
Sixthly, the executive team, in particular those that have served the company throughout my tenure on the board, namely the outstanding Jason Steen, the smart, wherever he is, Guy Wiper, and the creative Mike Ryan. Thanks, guys. You've done a marvellous job. Seventhly, my thanks to all of the staff throughout New Zealand, Australia and the United Kingdom. You do a magnificent job and I'm very grateful to you. And I'd like to make a special thank you to three other people who are in the room today who have been a big help, and that's Owen, Claire and Liz. Finally, I wish the new board under Mark Verbeest's leadership the very best for the future. I now invite our Chief Executive to address you. <laughs> Kia ora koutou katoa. Um, and I apologise, Chris, but we're about to hijack your agenda for a moment because the incoming <laughs> Chairman, Mark Verbeest, would like to make some comments on behalf of us all in terms of your outstanding contribution to this company over many, many years. Thank you, Neil. Kia ora. Good morning, everybody. And let me premise my comments first. Uh, Chris, I dare say, is possibly a bit annoyed at the fact that we've hijacked his meeting uh, without his knowledge, but it would be completely remiss not to comment on his tenure as our leader, as our skipper. He's done a magnificent job. And as you will have gained through his speech, he's somewhat of a humble individual. He doesn't actually uh, relish being talked about easily. He joined the board 10 years ago and became chairman, as he said, prior to the listing on the NZX. In process terms alone, he's attended 117 board meetings, 57 committee meetings, and countless other meetings, both related to the board, management, stakeholders, etc. Much more importantly, since listing, as he mentioned, total shareholder returns to us as shareholders have totaled 348%. Put this in some perspective in relation to the rest of the NZX. These returns have been in the top 10% of the NZX in each of the last five years. And as Chris mentioned, we've paid out 2.6 billion in dividends and taxes to the Crown, and obviously a very large amount to the rest of us shareholders as well. Compound average earnings growth since listing has approximated 6%, and compound average underlying profit has grown an average of 13%. Uh, Meridian entered the NZX index as the sixth largest listed company, and we are now number one on the exchange. The IPO was the largest in New Zealand's history, with a very large retail investor presence, which we still have today. Chris oversaw that IPO process and the appointments of our two CEOs since. Mark Binns, uh, who Chris talked about, and also our current CEO, Neil Barclay. As is often said, the appointment of the CEO is the most important decision that a board can make. Both of our CEOs have delivered, and of course Neil and the team will be expected to continue to, to deliver, as of course you will expect of myself and my fellow colleagues on the board. Chris has always understood the importance of Meridian to the country. He's overseen our move to strengthen the brand and what we stand for, our internal culture, and the need for the organisation to be sustainable for all our stakeholders over the long term. And that, of course, leads to long-term value, ultimately to all of us as shareholders, as well as being passionate about making sure our people are safe and secure. Chris has been a great leader and steward of the board, and 
and a, a really strong thought partner to both of our CEOs. He builds and leads strong teams. He's considered, he's good natured, but he's always focused on what we're here to do. He has done what all of us would wish to do in a similar position, and that is to leave the organisation in a better position to that which he found at the time he started. Chris, you can be very proud of what you have achieved. You have unquestionably left us in better shape. It's been a privilege to work with you. And we know that even though that you might be slightly removed from us going forward, we will continue to feel the weight of your expectations, which are high as we progress. On behalf of the board and the staff in the company, you leave with our best wishes. All the best to you and Jill, and thank you very much. Thanks, Mark. Um, I'd like to start by introducing uh, the Meridian executive team. They're all in the front row here, so they'll stand up and give you a wee wave. Um, Guy Wiperer, General Manager of Generation and Natural Resources. Tanya Palmer, Chief People Officer. Mike Rohn, Chief Financial Officer. Nick Kennedy, Chief Executive of Flux Federation. Chris Avers, General Manager of Wholesale. Claire Shaw, Acting General Manager of Office of Chief Executive. We've got uh, Jason Stein, Stein noted on the stage as company secretary, but Jason's also currently our Acting Chief Customer Officer. And absent today is Catherine Anderson, our Acting Chief Executive of Meridian Energy Australia and PowerShop Australia. Appropriately, I'm going to start with our people. And it's certainly been a year of change, people-wise. Jackie Cleland, Paul Chambers, Julian Smith and Ed McManus have all made personal decisions to leave the Meridian executive team and move on to their next career steps. We've introduced Tanya and Nick Kennedy from outside the company. Mike Rohn has changed roles within the executive team and Chris Avers has stepped up to the executive team as GM wholesale. We're progressing with further new appointments for our Chief Customer Officer and Australian CEO, and we're looking at both internal and external candidates for both of those roles. Despite the change at the top table, I've been delighted that the business has lost no momentum at all, demonstrated by the results that we've delivered. To me, that shows that the talent runs deep through our business and across all of our teams. Meridian continues to build a more diverse, more inclusive and more engaged workforce. Our gender balance, pay parity, diversity and inclusion measures all continue to move in the right direction. And it's something we're very proud of. But certainly the most sobering aspect of our performance in the last year has been around safety. Our total injury rate has spiked and in FY19, two of those incidents resulted in serious hand injuries. Now, I do remain confident that our safety culture and processes are strong, but we can't take that for granted. So we have sought specialist external advice to help us to ensure our worksite environment and the safety behaviour of all of our people at the very highest level. Now I am delighted with how our New Zealand retail brands have been performing and total customer numbers in New Zealand grew by 4% in the last year. Price dynamics have been interesting. The competitive acquisition pressures in residential and small business have seen average of prices fall during that time while the higher wholesale prices observed in the ASX futures market have flowed into corporate, industrial and spot exposed pricing. I'd also like to call out our growing commercial solar book. We have completed significant new solar builds with both Kiwi property and main freight during the last year and the pipeline for new developments is expanding rapidly. Most recently, we have begun working with Lincoln University as it takes its first step towards harnessing renewable energy with the installation of a solar array at their facility here in Christchurch. Now beyond volume and price, the underlying drivers of retail value are trending well as well. PowerShop leads the industry and Meridian leads the large retailers in brand preference. And we measure that as net promoter score. Both brands were recognised as finalists as the, as the Retailer of the Year at the Deloitte Energy Awards in August, and PowerShop got the goal. 
Customer retention rates are improving and our costs to serve on a per customer basis have declined by 6%. As Chris mentioned, we made a values-based decision to stop to last year stop clawing back prompt payment discounts and we introduced simpler tariffs to replace them. This resonated strongly with customers and is part of our plan to build the value of our business in the long run. A big project we have underway is the migration of the Meridian customer base to the Flux platform. Now, Flux Federation is our in-house software business that has developed the technology that allows us to bill and serve our PowerShop customer base. And by moving the, custom, the Meridian customers onto the same platform, we expect to reduce costs and improve the agility of our Meridian customer offerings. Progress is slightly slower than expected, but costs remain well under control. So all up, I think the increased size of our New Zealand customer base, accompanied by improved brand preference and customer retention rates, are contributing toward a stronger and more profitable retail business. I'm also particularly proud of the performance of our wholesale and generation teams this year. Sure, wholesale prices spiked significantly over the prior year, but in the context of what was average rain and water inflows into our hydro catchments and some significant planned plant outages, the teams did an amazing job delivering a record amount of generation to take advantage of the high wholesale prices, and that really did underpin our result. Meridian owns the largest, most reliable and efficient fleet of electricity generation assets in New Zealand. Our philosophy is that we are caretakers of those assets for future generations of New Zealanders, so maintenance of them is critically important and we're committed to that. They will continue to underpin the strong financial performance of our company for decades to come, if not centuries. We've had stellar success in Australia, growing the scale of our Australian business, and by year, and year end our customer numbers were up 36% on the prior year. Australia is obviously a much larger market than New Zealand, and we believe the potential reach of our PowerShop customer proposition, which is strongly centred on our green credentials, is several times the size of our current customer base. In recent months, the regulators in Australia have introduced default offer prices that retails must offer all customers. These default prices are a form of retail price cap. Now, price caps often have a perverse effect of reducing service levels and ultimately increasing costs to consumers. But we do think at the level that these default prices have been introduced in Australia, PowerShop can continue to compete at an, ex at an acceptable margin. The electricity wholesale market in Australia is also very volatile, so we must focus on managing the cost of supplying and growing our retail customers. We have expanded our portfolio of generation assets from two wind farms to now include three hydro stations and two off-take agreements for new wind farms. We currently have enough generation capacity to support a customer base close to twice what it is today. Shareholders can expect Australia to continue to play a significant part in growing Meridian's bottom line performance. The aluminium smelter at Bluff jointly owned by Rio Tinto and Sumitomo Chemicals, remains our most significant customer. The smelter is one of the most sustainable in the world as it produces aluminium powered mostly by renewable energy. And it also produces the purest aluminium in the world, largely due to the smart Kiwis who operate that plant down there in Southland. And if you own a smartphone, chances are it has aluminium that was smelted here in New Zealand in it. But we understand Enzys' operating costs are high compared to other aluminium smelters across the globe. Also, over the last 12 months, aluminium prices have fallen by upwards of $300 per tonne. So given its significance, we remain regularly engaged with the smelter owners to help support their continued operation in New Zealand. It's also well understood that given how transmission costs are allocated in New Zealand, the smelter effectively subsidises consumers of electricity outside of Southland, and those consumers are mostly in the Upper North Island. The transmission pricing methodology reform currently being proposed by the Electricity Authority that Chris referred to earlier will resolve some of this issue, but it may be several years before that reform package is implemented. So to help support the long-term viability of the smelter, we support adoption of the TPM reform package as soon as possible. Looking forward, in the near term, um, we've started the new financial year in very good fashion. Uh, the storage in New Zealand overall, and all of New Zealand's hydro lakes, 
is below average for this time of year and wholesale prices for electricity are significantly higher than what we'd normally see. This is not in itself unusual because we really get average weather conditions in this country. Like we did last financial year, we have demonstrated prudent use of the hydro storage that we manage and as of today, Meridian's hydro lakes are at about average levels. As such, we've been able to maintain a strong market share of electricity generation and benefit from those high wholesale prices. However, coming up in the first quarter of next year, Transpower are planning a partial outage of the Cook Strait cable. This outage will limit Meridian and other South Island generators' ability to transmit our generation to the North Island. As, su as such, uh, our generation market share will reduce during that outage and so too our generation revenues. Now we have planned for this, but the reduction in generation revenues over the upcoming summer will make it tough to match the great bottom line performance we posted in FY19. Looking further ahead, I think the outlook for the electricity sector is strong for, in both New Zealand and Australia. Uh, we're seeing organic demand growth on the back of continued growth in GDP and immigration. That in itself will require some new generation, renewable generation, to be built in New Zealand over the next few years. And as a result, we're looking to make an investment decision on our best new wind farm within the next six months. There's also a much bigger opportunity on the horizon. Our ability as a country to reduce our dependence on fossil fuels is closely linked with our ability to effectively build more renewable energy. Every electric car we introduce to this country removes about four tonnes of CO2 emissions each year. And whilst we can't go fully electric overnight, the economic versus carbon trade-off makes electrifying much of New Zealand's transport fleet an absolute no-brainer. Also, the cost of new renewable electricity generation is coming down, and that's great news for consumers. So despite what you may read or hear from time to time, onshore wind is highly profitable in New Zealand. The machines are getting bigger, costs are coming down, and undoubtedly the bulk of new generation in this country will be wind. Meridian is New Zealand's most successful and experienced wind farm developer. We also have a strong balance sheet, and we're therefore particularly well placed strategically to grow our dividends on the back of new renewable investments. From where I'm standing, the future looks pretty darn exciting for our industry and for our company. And lastly, uh, I'd also like to thank Chris on behalf of all past and present members of the Meridian team who have worked with you. You've challenged us to be the best we can. You've set the bar very high for the standard of our interactions, our discussions, and our decision making at board and management level. But you've also shown immense support and encouragement for, manage, for management that has set the tone and I believe allowed people to flourish in our business. I know as a first time a chief executive, I've truly valued the guidance and counsel that you've given me over the last two years uh, and I'll be a much better CEO as a result. So we thank you, Chris, for your challenge, your commitment, your encouragement, and that I believe is based on your belief in this company and its people. Thank you very much. Thank you, Neil. In the notice of meeting, we invited shareholders to submit questions in writing prior to the close of business on Thursday, the 10th of October. I can advise that no written questions were received in the required manner by that deadline. I will now open the floor for other questions. We will accept questions from shareholders, bondholders, or from anyone who has been appointed as a corporate representative. <coughs> there is one microphone set up in the central aisle of the room, over here. If you have a question, please move to that microphone. I realise it's a bit inconvenient for some people of where you're sitting, but this is important because the meeting is being filmed for the webcast audience 
and it is the only way the online audience will be able to see you and hear your question or comment. Once at the microphone, please introduce yourself and then address your question to me as chairman of the meeting. I will then either answer your question or redirect it to a member of the board or to the chief executive as appropriate. Please only raise questions relating to the management and operations of the business at this stage and hold questions relating to resolutions until that part of the agenda. There clearly are some questions, so I don't need to ask whether there are some. I'm Dr. Stan Simpson, a retired research director. Thank you. If you wouldn't mind, Go, sorry, excuse me. Could you repeat it again? I'm sorry. I'm Dr. Stan Simpson, a retired research director. I'm most impressed with the financial ability of this board, but I did not hear quite enough about the risks that might be implied by climate change. And I'm, one factor that I'm considering first, and I see we've got a, an expert who might know the answer, I'm concerned about the national in grid, the ability to transfer power from south to north, and unprecedented storms might well wipe out that cable we've got, and we could be reduced to third country level without such a link. And I'm wondering whether a new modern cable with safety uh, enhanced might be a feasible thing. The second point is talking of climate change, there is nothing to suppose that the beautiful water that the Waitaki supplies cannot diminish over slowly and gradually with increasing droughts over a period of 10 to 20 years. So there's a climate change risk with the precipitation entering the Waitaki system. That's another point. Um, I, I had a third one. I'm not sure I can recall it just this minute, but I think that may be enough for you to chew on. All right. <laughs> thanks, thanks for your questions, uh, Stan. Uh, Jason, can you, while Neil's responding to the question, look in the annual report as to where the climate rain risks are all listed, because that's one thing that we've done as a first company in New Zealand. So if we can refer you to that for reading later on, I'll put a copy here if you want. Um, and Neil, can you answer the other questions? Yeah, thanks, Stan. Um, we have very comprehensive uh, risk management practices um, and frameworks in our organisation, and we do look forward and plan for the effects of climate change on our assets, and, and particularly in, when you're talking large hydro assets in the South Island, the, the, the concern we're worried about is, is, is those large flood events that are probably greater than what we've seen in the past. Our studies to date, with some uh, remedial work that we do plan and, and complete, would suggest those structures were built uh, so well that they will stand up to the maximum credible flood that we can contemplate. As, it to, as you to, to, if we talk about the, um, the, the Cook Strait Cable, I mean, I mean the, the question is probably best levelled at Transpower because they maintain that asset, but I do understand from the work we've done with them that they have a very comprehensive risk management framework as well. They do maintain the asset particularly well, as you know, evidenced by the fact they're having an outage for the first quarter of next year. Um, they will do more work on that asset and probably augment it and make it bigger, so that you'll probably have a bit more redundancy, certainly within the time frame, I think, before climate change comes along and starts you know, throwing some weather patterns at these things that uh, could cause problems. So my, my, from my perspective, the industry is, considers these risks, understands them and is planning for them quite effectively. In terms of um, Waitaki inflows, it is interesting, but the studies that we have done would suggest <coughs> that the, uh, the weather patterns hitting New Zealand are likely to be wetter in the west, so the, the, the Southern Alps are likely to get bigger dumps of rain more frequently. So actually the hydro catchments are likely to catch more water rather than less over time. Um, and the east coast of the country is likely to be dry. Now that, 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 that broad general views, and there's a lot of, uh, not water to flow under the bridge, but you know what I mean. <laughs> um, 
but uh, we'll, we'll manage it as it evolves. But yeah, at this stage, we're thinking we're probably going to have more uh, water to deal with in those catchments <laughs> rather than less. Thank you. Jason, did you find that page number uh, yes. for Stan? Thank, thank you, Stan. So I direct you to page 27 of the annual report. But more specifically, um, we, as Chris alluded to, were the first uh, large company in New Zealand to publish a list of what's called the Task Force for Climate Change Related Disclosures on our website. And that is a list of all the risks that we see associated that is a risk that we see, uh, sorry, a list of all of the risks that we see associated with climate change. Uh, and if you come and see me after the meeting, I'll direct you to those. And um, if you give me your email, I'll send you a link to that. All right, thank you very much. My name's Fiona McLeod, and I represent the New Zealand Shareholders Association. But this comment is um, a personal one for me. Um, with climate change becoming a growing concern globally, uh, certainly as an individual shareholder, I'd like to thank Meridian Board for their comprehensive annual report, but with particular reference to the sections on risks and opportunities of climate change. Based on guidance from the Task Force for Climate Related Financial Disclosures. This report was only formally released in New York two weeks ago. It is the most comprehensive reporting of climate change issues I've seen within the New Zealand context. My hope now is that other boards will show leadership as good corporate citizens and follow Meridian's direction. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fiona. <laughs> other questions or comments? Can't see anybody putting up their hand. So I might move on to the resolutions if that's all right by the meeting. Last chance. Okay, let's go to the resolutions. Before we move to the five formal resolutions set out in the notice of meeting, I will briefly outline today's voting procedures. Voting will be by way of poll, which means it will be a secret ballot and you will need to complete your voting forms. Persons attending the meeting who are not shareholders, proxy holders, or corporate representatives of a shareholder may not vote. This includes bondholders. Many shareholders who are not attending this meeting have already voted by proxy. At the request of the New Zealand Shareholders Association, the announcement of the proxy count will be deferred until after the four, five formal resolutions have been considered by the meeting. It is my pleasure to introduce and move resolution one to re-elect Jan Dawson as a director of the company. Jan was appointed to the board in 2012 and was re-elected by shareholders at the 2016 annual meeting. The board considers Jan to be an independent director and unanimously recommends that shareholders vote in favour of her re-election. Jan, I invite you to address the meeting. Thank you, Chris, and good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak briefly on the Chairman's instructions uh, to you um, right. to seek your support <laughs> to continue as a director of your company, Meridian Energy. I feel like um, I'm an old hand at this because this is the third time that I've stood before you and asked for your support. Um, so forgive me if you've heard this before, but um, I'll give you some background. Since leaving my role as a partner and the chief executive for KPMG in New Zealand in 2011, I've been a full-time professional non-executive director, serving on boards of listed companies in New Zealand and Australia and across a wide range of industries. My career at KPMG and these subsequent non-executive director appointments allows me to bring skills and knowledge in financial reporting and risk management and people management to the board. Importantly, my multiple board roles give me the ability to add insights to the board on governance issues and business issues currently affecting companies in New Zealand and in the global context. I joined Meridian 
shortly before the listing process, as Chris said, in 2012. And as Chris also said, the, the company and you as shareholders have um, enjoyed a very rewarding return since that date. This is a responsibility that your board and management take very seriously. But we also place a great deal of emphasis on the values of the company and commitments to sustainability. I've been the chair of the Audit and Risk Committee for the past six and a half years. If you re-elect me today, I will step down as chair of the Audit and Risk and take on chair of People and Remuneration Committee. The importance of values to the company and to the business is reinforced by the culture and conduct of our people, and we see this as a very important role. It's been a privilege and a great responsibility to serve as a director of your company, and I ask for your support to continue in this role today. Thank you. Jan, just remain there. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Jan. I move that Jan Dawson, who retires by rotation and is eligible for re-election, be re-elected as a director of the company. Is there any discussion? Any questions of Jan? Doesn't appear so, Jan. So thank you. Thank you. I have moved the resolution. I therefore now put the resolution. Shareholders should complete their voting papers for resolution one. It is my pleasure to introduce and move resolution two to elect Julia Hoare as a director of the company. Julia was appointed as a director of the company by the board with effect from 26 September 2019 and now retires and is eligible for election. The board considers Julia to be an, in, an independent director and unanimously recommends that shareholders vote in favour of her election. I call on Julia to address the meeting. Thank you, Chris, and good morning, everyone. I feel very privileged to be standing here before you today. You're the shareholders of one of New Zealand's very, very, very best companies and the company plays such a pivotal role here in New Zealand. I'm incredibly excited to have the opportunity to join the board with your support and it appeals for a number of reasons. Um, not only has the company made, had a, an enormous commercial success, but it's done that whilst balancing it with a strong sense of its own purpose. It's very committed to sustainable growth, which is something that's very, very dear to my heart. It has a management team who are super smart, dedicated, driven, and absolutely passionate about the business. And before thinking about any board, it's really important to look at the governance of the company. And I look across at the directors here today, and I have enormous respect for their governance skills, and I'd love to be part of that team. But as a director, it's really important to reflect on what you can bring to a company, um, what you can take to the board table, and also um, in terms of looking after shareholders and what is absolutely best for your interests. I'm a full-time professional director, um, and I am, am independent, and I just thought it would be useful to just share a, a little bit about my background with you and what I hope to bring to Meridian to actually um, add support to this fantastic team. Prior to my governance roles, I was a partner with PwC for 20 years. And since then, I've taken on a number of governance roles, um, and I'm on the boards of four listed companies, Auckland Airport, Port of Tauranga, the A2 Milk Company, and AWF Madison. And I'm also on the board of Water Care Services in Auckland. Those latter two companies I mentioned, I will actually be stepping down um, in the course of 2020, so that I've got um, lots of ability to focus on, on my four other directorships. But with that, I bring a, a huge amount of governance experience to the table. I'm actually very passionate and committed about good governance. I'm the Vice President of the Institute of Directors in New Zealand and have chaired the Auckland branch and really committed to actually putting something back into the governance community. I come from a, a strong financial and commercial background. I'm a fellow of the Chartered Accountants Australia and New Zealand. And um, I'm also, I was appointed to the External Reporting Board's Advisory uh, Panel, which is a panel that uh, oversees the standard setters for accounting standards in New Zealand. In terms of audit and risk, Jan mentioned she'd be stepping down from 
uh, the Audit and Risk Committee. Uh, if I am appointed today, I, I will assume that role, and I do chair the Audit and Risk Committees of my other boards, which I, I thoroughly enjoy. I've got a very, very strong understanding of infrastructure and capital spend, and that's really grown also through my involvement on the boards of both Auckland Airport and Wardcare that have um, huge capital projects ahead of them, and so I'm, I'm integrally involved in those. I've got a very deep understanding of sustainability and climate change, <coughs> which I've really accumulated uh, from a very active involvement in the area over the last 20 years, and it's something that's very dear to my heart. And currently, uh, I put some time into the Sustainable Finance Forum, and so I'm part of the leaders group looking at that. So really just to wrap up, um, I'm a hard worker. I absolutely love to learn and learn the detail. I can't wait to, with, with your support, uh, really get to understand the Meridian business, uh, work hard and roll up my sleeves where necessary. So in closing, I'm just very honoured and privileged to have the opportunity to be standing here in front of you today. Um, it's a fantastic company. I'd love to contribute more to it and, and take your interests uh, forward. So I hope I have your support. Uh, today, so thank you very much. Thank you, Julia. Just stay there if you wouldn't mind. I move that Julia Hoare, appointed as a director of the company by the board with effect from 26 September 2019, who retires and is, el is eligible for election, be elected as a director of the company. Is there any discussion? Any questions? Doesn't look like there is, so thanks, Julie. Thank you. I have moved the resolution. I now, therefore, put the resolution. Shareholders should complete their voting papers for resolution two. It is my pleasure to introduce and move resolution three to elect Michelle Henderson as a director of the company. Michelle was appointed as a director of the company by the board with effect from 16 October 2019 and now retires and is eligible for election. The board considers Michelle to be an independent director and unanimously recommends that shareholders vote in favour of her election. Michelle, I invite you to address the meeting. Kia ora koutou. Thanks, Chris. I'm a mechanical engineer with experience having worked in both New Zealand and Australia in large-scale infrastructure businesses. I have New Zealand electricity energy sector experience, having recently held the executive role of Chief Operating Officer on the Southern Electricity Lines company called PowerNet. I've lived in Invercargill since the early 90s, with the exception of a few years away in Australia. I bring my regional perspective to the board and would more specifically point out that Southland is the home of some of our iconic assets in the company and stakeholders. I'm a chartered member of the Institute of Directors. I've got broad exposure from that heavy industrial operational environment through to commercial exposure of complex company structures and I would bring complementary skills to the board, particularly in the safety and sustainability space. I consider Meridian to be a great company. It's progressive with a very talented management team. The board and management are living the values and driving the culture to deliver clean energy for a fairer and healthier world. I would consider it a tremendous privilege to serve you and all other stakeholders as a director on the board. I seek your support to elect me today. Thank you. Thank, <coughs> excuse me. Thank you, Michelle. I move that Michelle Henderson, appointed as a director of the company with effect from 16 October 2019, who retires and is elib eligible for election, be elected as a director of the company. Is there any discussion? Doesn't seem that there are any questions or comments, so thank you, Michelle. I have moved the resolution. I now therefore put the resolution. Shareholders should complete their voting papers for resolution three. It is my pleasure to introduce and move resolution four to elect Nagaja Santakuma 
as a director of the company. Nagajar has been appointed as a director of the company by the board with effect from 1 January 2020 and is eligible for election. The board considers Nagajar to be an independent director and unanimously recommends that shareholders vote in her favour. Nagaja, I, address, I invite you to address the meeting. Thank you, Chris. Kira Tato, Ko Tahoma Te Maunga, Ko Pacific Ocean Te Moana, No Bombay Me Seattle Aho, Ko Sanat Kumar Sharma Toku Fanao, Ko Nagaja Toku Ingwa. I moved here from Seattle four and a half years ago. My family and I chose New Zealand for its natural beauty, its outdoors, the kindness of its people, and the adventure of a new place to live. I moved to the US in 1998 after completing an undergraduate degree in chemical engineering. Over the next 20 years, uh, I gained valuable experience in technology by building digital and retail solutions, driving innovation around customer-centric thinking, developing high-performing and globally united teams. I'm currently a director of New Zealand Post and have recently resigned from my role as general manager at Icebreaker, where I was leading the global digital, commercial, and technology teams for the last two and a half years to devote my time and energy to the next phase of my career in professional governance. Meridian Energy is a New Zealand icon, a purpose-led and value-generating company. The energy industry is increasingly becoming more relevant and responsible for climate change, and it faces the disruption not only posed by technological developments, but socioeconomic, political, and environmental step changes. I'm incredibly privileged to have the opportunity to work with these distinguished colleagues on the Meridian Energy Board and Management Team, indeed the entire organization, to further Meridian's momentum and purpose for clean energy for a fairer and healthier world. Thank you so much for your support today. Thank you, Nagaja. I move that Nagaja Santakuma appointed as a director of the company by the board with effect from 1 January 2020 be elected as a director of the company. Is there any discussion? Fiona. Ah, yes, yes, please. Uh, Fiona McLeod from the New Zealand Shareholders Association. The Shareholders Association acknowledge the leadership shown by the board to develop and grow our talent pool of new directors. We applaud the direction of gender diversity. Although not mentioned in the notice of meeting, we understand Nagaja was a future director appointed at Spark, the future director program which Meridian has participated in. This gives participants exposure to life as a uh, NZX director. <coughs> Unfortunately, only 7% of NZX, com NZX companies have participated in this program. So again, we thank Meridian for their leadership. Thank you, Fiona. Thanks, Nagaja. Well, assuming there are no other questions. I should perhaps say I think it's a very important program and the person we had uh, on our board or involved in our board meetings was a great contributor and I think learnt a lot. Okay. So in terms of Nagaja, I have moved the resolution. I therefore now put the resolution shareholders should complete their voting papers for Resolution 4. Resolution 5, it is my duty to introduce and move Resolution 5 to revoke the company's con constitution and adopt a new constitution in the form presented at this 2019 annual shareholders meeting. The key reasons for this resolution are that the former NZX main board debt and listing rules effective 1st of October 2017, have been replaced by new listing rules dated 1st of January 2019. As this is the first shareholder meeting since NZX adopted the new listing rules, the company is required to update its constitution at today's meeting. 
The principal proposed amendments to the Constitution are summarised in the Notice of Meeting and relate to director rotation, board composition, managing directors and restrictions on appointments. None of them are controversial and they are essentially of a technical nature. The company secretary holds a copy of the existing and proposed cons constitutions, both of which are available for inspection at this meeting should any person wish to do so. I move that the company's constitution be revoked and a new constitution in the form presented at the 2019 ASM be adopted with effect from the close of the ASM. Is there any discussion? Doesn't appear that there is, so I have moved the resolution. I therefore now put the resolution. Shareholders should complete their voting papers for resolution five. Thank you for your attendance to the resolutions. As advised to the meeting earlier, many shareholders have voted by proxy before the meeting and at the request of the New Zealand Shareholders Association, we have delayed the announcement of those results until after the consideration of the resolution. As shown on the screen now, I can advise that 1.926 billion proxies representing 75% of the shares on issue were lodged as proxies with the share registrar computer share two days prior to the commencement of the meeting. On your way to refreshments at the back of the room, please place your voting papers in one of the ballot boxes that are being carried by computer share staff. Once all votes have been cast, they will be counted by computer share and scrutinised by the company's auditor, Deloitte. The results will be advised to the New Zealand and Australian stock exchanges later today. As the policy of the board is to rotate the annual shareholder meeting around the main centres of Christchurch, Wellington and Auckland, the current intention of the board is to hold next year's meeting in Wellington. Thank you for your for attending Meridian's annual shareholder meeting. I now declare the meeting closed. <laughs>